All right, welcome. Welcome, friends. I had a request for a backbending class, and I am not uh, the best known for my backbending. I don't think it's exactly my forte, but for a handstander, I'm, I'm pretty good. So, especially once I'm nice and warmed up. So I'm going to show you all the drills that I do in order to uh, properly warm up my back bend. I'm 42, I've had three kids. So, you know, a couple epidurals, you know, just carrying car seats around. Like, it's not the easiest for me at my age. And so I really have to do proper warm up before I just back bend. Even going to like a full vinyasa or an ashtanga class, for me, it is not proper uh, warm up for my back to back bend well. So if I'm gonna back bend, for Instagram or for just my own enjoyment, this is what I do. And it can take me a good 45 minutes to properly warm up my back. This is what I'm gonna use. I have my strap. You don't have to have any of these things. You could do it without it. But I do think um, the hip flexors, the low back, the glutes, those areas that we really need to have working properly, it helps to have some tools to kind of just like kickstart that, that activation that we need. So I have my band. I have some lightweight one pound ankle weights. You can use heavier than that, but I decided not to overdo it as I already kind of overdid it on my butt yesterday. And I'm gonna use a foam roamer, which I don't usually use, but I'm going to use this idea from one of my um, handstanding students, Candy. She uh, suggested this for doing my cobra warm up. So we're gonna do it. Let's do the thing. All right, and you know, I think you're just gonna see a lot more, good Lord, a lot more lives going up because I don't have to take up all the space on my own. All right, so let's first do the leg lifts. If you are doing this with me, I'm gonna put the weights on, feel free to. If you don't want to, you can absolutely do it without. <clears throat> I may leave them on the whole time. I probably will leave them on the whole time and then um, take them off when it's time to back them. I am working on getting a microphone situation set up so that y'all can hear me better. And I'm working on getting a timer set up. Things are shifting, things are shifting. It's exciting. All right, so I'm not gonna do the timer like we do sometimes where we work for one minute. We're just gonna do 25, 25 of everything. And I may be a little overzealous and be like, good Lord, why did I say I was doing 25? So you can't see all of me, doesn't really matter. I'm lifting the leg. So for these first ones where we do 25, you wanna keep the um, hip bones down. So you're only gonna lift about this high. It's not super high. You wanna feel that hip bone grounding. So I can switch forward a little bit. All right, so let's start with the right leg. 25 on the right, 25 on the left, and then we're gonna repeat it with the leg going higher. Okay, this has to go farther ahead. While it's pretty, it's gonna smash my face. Ready? 25 on the right. One, two, three, four, Five, keep squeezing the legs towards the midline. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Second side. So that hip bone might be not feeling the best as it's pushing into the ground. It's okay, you'll make it. So definitely use your, your mat. Don't be on a hard cement floor like I am without something to protect the bones. Two seconds I have one, two, you're not using the upper body much, right? It's just kind of there for stabilization, not really pushing. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You can even have the head all the way down and rest, but I want you to be able to hear me. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. If I, lightness, go lay down. That's lightness. He's the younger of the two poodles. Um, if I could only really do one exercise, like say I was super pressed for time and I had to back bend that day, I would do this exercise because it works the low back and the glutes. I would stretch the shoulders and then I would do it. All right, next one. We're gonna do the same thing, but instead of keeping the hip bone grounded, you're gonna lift that leg. It may look more like this. So you can see you get a lot more height. I need a little bit more stabilization through the shoulders. 25, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
too crazy hard for you. I mean, you want some intensity. You can see I'm kind of like having to catch my breath, but we don't want you so tired that you're going to be moving like sloppily when you come into your back bends because they're already scary enough. So we don't need you feeling like exhausted and it's just too hard, you know? So if you don't have a weight, what I'll have you do is do your shrugs in a plank position, which is fine, but I like them overhead because you open up the shoulders more. So just shrugging in like this 25 times, arms straight, dropping the chest through. Let me grab my weight. I'm gonna go at 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15. Okay. I just leave all my stuff out all over the basement, so it's ready for me to grab. All right, so I'm gonna bring this overhead. Kneel so you can see me. Normally I do it standing, doesn't really matter. Make sure that the core stays nice and tight so that you're not feeling like you're not supported. You're gonna lift the weight all the way up or in your plank. And I'm just gonna kind of drop down, push up. See how I kind of create this space around my shoulders and then I close it. All right, so let's do 25. And then we're gonna stretch the shoulders too. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Five more. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25. Now with my weight overhead, now if you're on the puppy or if you're on the plate on the floor, I'm just going to have you take puppy pose where you stretch out the shoulders. But if you have a weight overhead like I do, I'm 
please be very careful with this. We're going to hold the weight and ask it to help open up our shoulders. So please move through this mindfully or just use the floor for puppy pose. So I have the weight all the way up and overhead. I'm lifting it as high as I can. And then I bring the arms back, opening up the shoulders more, keeping the chest open, core tight. A little bit of a stretch, bring back forward, relax. Let's do that a couple of times. Please don't drop the weight on your head. And we will not be held responsible because if you're not feeling safe, you should do this on the floor in puppy. Or you can even do puppy pose on the wall, no weight needed. Let's do it a couple more times. Lift the weight up, shrug the shoulders up, so elevate, and then stretch back. I'm kind of cupping the weight with my fingers and wrapping it around the edge of the weight to grab hold. Come back forward, release. I'm gonna do three more. Lift and open. That right shoulder, since having shoulder surgery, is much tighter on the right side. Breathe into it. Two more. Inhale, elevate. Exhale, open. If this starts to feel like too much, back away, use less weight, go slower. I cannot emphasize that enough. You've got to be very careful. I'm going to do it one more time. Lift and open. Really, for me, I'm thinking about that right shoulder. Come on, relax and open. And lower down. Ooh, okay, that's it for the weight. Weight is gone. Okay, now that the shoulders are a little bit more open, we're going to do those cobra rolls like Candy told me to. So I think that I am still kind of learning this, but I think it's a great drill. So for me, I did see when I was practicing with it, the foam roller kind of gets away from you and you do need to kind of <clears throat> readjust it get it back underneath you, no big deal. So I'm gonna kind of start on my forearms and I'm gonna lift up until I'm on my hands and roll back down. But you can also just kind of start uh, lower on the form by the wrist and just come to the hands here. Let's do that 25 times, really thinking about strengthening the lower back, opening up the chest. Here we go. One, two, Three, four, five. Let me adjust my arms, making sure that you're keeping the pelvic floor engaged and lifted, belly button in. Four, oh, no, that's five. There it is, five. Six, sorry. Seven, eight, nine. Ooh, these are hard candy. 10, but I can learn new tricks. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. She may have even had it under her chest. 17, 18. 19, 20, a little higher lift again, let's try five more, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Yeah, you know, I did it on my hand, I'm thinking now she might have done it on her chest. Let me see. I just want to try it. No, so I don't know how you'd pull up. But you can settle in like this and stretch out. Open the chest, activate the low back. Whew. All right. No doubt she will uh, <laughs> message me on Instagram and be like, Kelsey, what were you doing? I don't know. Getting stronger? 
Try new things. All right, we're gonna glute thrust. This is another great time to use the weight as the glutes can be a little lazy. I wouldn't use 15, well, maybe 15 pounds is okay. I'm gonna do it, I'm bringing the weight back. We're going to glute thrust. I'm gonna grab a block though because I do like having the head lifted when I glute thrust the chin slightly tucked. So I'm gonna do 100, but we're gonna do 25 with the legs wide, 25 with the legs in a diamond shape, 25 regular glute thrusts, and then 25 working just that very low part of our um, glute thrusts. All right, oh, all the way down. I like the block, just for a little bit of a chin tuck. Weight on the hips. And first, I'm going to have the feet nice and wide, shoulder blades tucked under. So my feet are just to the outside edges of my mat. And I'm going to hip thrust up and just stay at this top, I don't know, six, eight inches or so, not all the way up, all the way down. All right, 25. Keep the pelvic floor lifted and really focus on using the glutes and not using the quads, okay? Okay, here we go. One, two, three four, five, six, push down through the heels, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 25 more, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now we're going to take our feet in kind of a diamond shape, pinky toes down, kind of like the arches of the feet come together, or you can just have pinky toes down, arches kind of face forward, doesn't matter. And we're going to thrust up 25 more times, so get yourself kind of situated once again. Here we go. One, two, three, four, squeeze your butt, five, six, Seven, my hands are just to keep the weight there. I'm not holding the weight with my hands at all. 10, 11, 12, push down through the feet, 13, 14, 15, squeeze at the top, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, almost there, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. All right, now we're just going to do standard, normal glute bridges, 25 more. All right, nice and high at the top of the glute thrust. Here we go. One, two, three, push feet down, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, strong legs, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Good, we're up to 75 now, we have 25 left. We're going to do the very bottom of our glute thrust. So if you've thrusted with me before, I like doing these very low end of the motion, low range glute thrusts. It's like the low back goes on and off off the floor, but the glutes shouldn't touch. So let me show you. It's literally just right here. Like these little tiny glute thrusts. Yeah, my low back touches and my butt, my butt shouldn't. All right, 25 of these. Chuck the shoulder blades under again. Remember you're pushing down through the feet and maybe like the feet are going forward, but they're not, but that's the energy that we're using. 25, here we go, very bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Yeah, yeah, once we Teach the glutes to turn on. When you backbend, you're going to feel, I messed up my hair, so much stronger. You're gonna feel really empowered and safe in your backbends. 
rather than like just <laughs> scared, unsupported, fragile, vulnerable. Having the glutes support you, it's a game changer, I promise you. All right, oh, standing side stretches. All right, so these aren't too bad, I don't think. You could use the block to hold between your arms, or you don't have to. We're going to just reach the arms up, and we're gonna go all the way to the side. I'm not turning in, but I'm trying to keep my body in line, and I'm just gonna go from side to side. That would just be one as I go from left to right, so it's really gonna feel kind of like 50. Okay, it's getting sweaty, which is good, because you need to be very warm for back bending. All right, here we go, arms up, core in. Legs are strong and supportive, here we go, one. Two, reach really tall through the arms, three, four, this is going to give you lots of length when we get the side body participating in the back bend, six, seven, eight, Nine, these should be harder than what you think, right? So they look kind of like, this is not a big deal. I'm literally just waving from side to side. Well, okay, well this would be easy. This would be easy. But to keep the legs strong and to really get this much of a side bend, should be pretty hard. There's 12, so you're about halfway. 13, keep reaching tall through the arms, 14. 15, pelvic floor lifted, 16, 17, 18, stay long, I know it all shrink in, belly in, 19, 20, five more, come on, with me, 21, 22, 23, I know, 24, and 25. I think working with numbers and timers is a great idea because had I just been doing this by myself at home, I might have been like, 25 is kind of stupid. Why did I write that down <laughs> and then stop at 15? But I also have this mindset of, I wrote it down, I set the timer, I gotta go to the one minute, I gotta do the 25. Obviously we listen when our body starts to hurt or there's any major red flags, but if there's not, why are you stopping, you know? Take a breath, take two and come back, all right? We're going to do more shoulders, wheel push-ups. Wheel push-ups are great for the shoulders. We're starting to back bend here. But what we're really focusing on is shoulder strength, shoulder mobility, opening the shoulders. And we're also starting to feel that um, lengthening of the spine because we're going to start working on bringing the nose or the chin towards the heel. So we're trying to deepen our back bend at the same time. Okay, here we go. So this is what it's going to look like. You're going to come into a back bend. 25 right in a row might be too hard. We'll try and do half and then take a breath and do the other half. So it's not gonna be the greatest back bend. That's not the goal. The goal is to strengthen the shoulders and start to open them up. So here's my beginner back bend and I'm going to bring my nose towards my feet like this. All right, so get yourself in position. If you're not already there, I got a cat that wants in the house. <laughs> All right, back bend, wheel push-ups, and then I'll let her in, ready? 25, push up. And one, reach with your nose, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, do one more, thirteen, rest on your head. Let's take three breaths and then we'll do our other 12. Slow your breath down. Let that calm your mind. 
One more. All right, we gotta go. 12 more. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, last one, 25. I don't know about you, but my quads got tired, which says to you, says to me, the legs need to support us. All right, let me go let that cat in. Let's rest for a breath or two or three. Put a kitty in, and we'll proceed. She'll be back. All right. The next one is, oh, we're getting our bands out. So I'm just going to keep my ankle weights on because they're just one pounders, but it might be too much. Feel free to either just keep the ankle weights on or switch to the band. You don't have to do both. When I put these bands on, I do a figure eight shape. So I put it on and I twist and then I put the other leg through. Not only does it give it a little bit of resistance, but it also keeps the band from just falling off my heels. We're gonna do 25 in every direction. So I'll have 25 straight forward, 25 out to the side, and then 25 straight back. And then we do a bonus 25 of up and out. So it's kind of like a march and kick. We'll do everything for the right leg, and then we'll do everything for the left leg and uh, you'll see, like, whoo, that right leg is gonna be toast by the end. At least for me, it always is. This is also a super great pressing drill, so if you wanna press the handstand, this really strengthens the hip flexors. Do this at least once or twice a week. Here we go, 25, which will be 100 per leg. First, we're going straight up. If you need the wall, use the wall. Otherwise, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, point the toe, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'll turn so you can see me. Just a breath or two. Maybe we'll rest between sides and out to the side. So I kind of shift the weight into my left leg. And one, two, Three, I have to flex the foot here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Ow. I, I do these all the time. And maybe they've gotten easier, but they don't feel like it. <laughs> That's why I haven't increased my number. Maybe I'll do 33 sometimes, but uh, they're still pretty tough. Now we're gonna go straight back, but the leg kind of turns out to the side. You can point it straight back if you want, but I like a little bit of a little bit of external rotation to work the outer glute a bit. Okay, here we go. 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, we got one more set with the march up, kick out. Still on the right leg. Ground down on that left leg, get stable. Here we go, march up, kick out. One, Two, three, that's not how it goes. So sorry. Let's try this again. <laughs> I was cheating. It's one, two, here we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 
15, Ooh. stabilizing a lot, 16, Ooh. I fell, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, we need a good rest in between sides. Even if you don't feel like you're tired because what will happen is because you have uh, kind of triggered, turned on that right leg so much that the right leg will try to stabilize and take over for the right leg or for the left leg. So the second side, the left leg will be lifted. I want the left glute to work. I want the left hip flexor to work. But because the right leg has been doing so much work, it's like, I got it. I will do all of it. <laughs> and we want, we want the right leg to chill out. Yes, it's got to stabilize but I don't want it doing more work than what the left leg's doing. So take a few breaths, chill for a minute. I wish that kitty would come back so I could let her in. That one was Boo, just so you know, in case my daughter's watching this. It was Boo, it wasn't Jim. I have some cats I'm allowed outside and some cats I cannot. I have to follow the rules. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's get ready to do the second side. side. Hopefully your band is still on. Readjust it if you need to. And let's do it. So ground down to that right leg. Feel stable. Use the wall fingertips only if you need to. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I stole this drill straight from the local, local competitive gymnastics team. You know, my kids were all gymnasts. I was not, but my kids were gymnasts. And this was a drill that the girls would do, I think while they were on the beam. <laughs> all right, here we go. Out to the side, <laughs> flex the foot. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, almost there, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I'm feeling it happening. My right leg is trying to take over. Hi, hi, hi. Hi guys, so many highs. Hi! And then back behind us. So stabilize on that right leg. It's the left side. Okay, this is the one that you tend to feel the opposite leg take over on. So let's really focus on activating that left glute and not through the right side. Here we go 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Whew. Now we still got that kick out March, right, March kick out, I said it wrong. Okay, let's see, I, I try to count right this time. So it's one for the whole movement. Okay, so we're gonna march up, kick out. Last set. Here we go, ready, set, go. One, Two, three, it's like the icing on the cake, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, come on, right leg. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, almost there, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Oh gosh, whew. I will say sometimes when you're doing that drill before you press, if that's one that you use for pressing, you'll find like, it's good for a long-term pressing goals. Sometimes we do those pressing drills and then that day, the hip flexors are kind of trash. They're exhausted. They're overworked a bit. So you might not have the best presses after doing those. You may have better presses two, three days later 
when your muscles are recovered. We have to have recovery time. All right, we're, we're getting there. I know it's a lot. How long have we been at this? I don't even know. Oh my gosh, 40 minutes. See, it takes like 45 minutes to warm up for back bends because I'm 42. I feel like that lady on SNL, she's like 50, 50 years old, I'm 42. 42 years old. <laughs> kind of proud of it. Feeling pretty good for 42. I mean, I've hurt myself a bit, but I'm still going. All right, we're going to do kneeling squats because the quads have to do a lot of work for the back bend, so we're gonna get those quads turned on and ready to go. Let's start with 25, maybe do two, three sets. So the knees are only hips width. They're not super wide, they're gonna flare a little bit. Please adjust as needed. All we're gonna do is sit and go back up. That's it, you can hold a weight overhead if you really wanna work the quads, but I want them to still feel strong for back bend. So let's do 25, pause, and then repeat. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I adjust my legs as I need to. They start to flare, I just pull them back in. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, last one, 25. Let's sit. If you can sit in hero's pose, cool. It's nice to get some internal rotation from the hips. If it's too much to sit between the heels, sit on the heels. You don't have to make it as deep. Internal rotation isn't too bad for me, but I had years where it was really, really, really bad. And I had a great uh, teacher that was like, for this, you know, sometimes pushing the exact same pose that's hurting you is like not the answer. But for this one, it was. She was like, so if you can't get into hero's pose for you, I'm gonna have you sitting in hero's pose for five minutes a day. I was like, oh my God, I can't do it. But she was very smart and it helped. So I'm back in hero's pose. Thank you, day. All right, let's do it again. 25 more, let's see how that goes. We'll do another set if we feel good. Ready, one, two, you can see how a couple of weights up here. Ooh wee, four, five, six, I never know what to do with my arms, seven, eight, hi Lucy, nine, 10, 11, go lay down honey, 12, 13, go lay down, go. Go. Don't make me use that voice. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. You know, I think actually, while I usually like to do 100, that's just like on a leg day, I really want to stay strong for the back bend. So, hi. I, uh, I just wanted the quads to get kind of turned on. I don't want them pooped out. So, Lucy needs a quick hug. Now we're gonna stretch a little bit more, and then we're gonna back bend. So, it was 40 minutes of work, and now we're gonna start to uh, open up a bit more. All right, Lucy, that's enough. Go lay down, honey. Come on, come on. You need to go lay down. Come on, go to your bed. Go lay down, go gonna make me say it mean. Come on. Go lay down. Go. I think that they can sense maybe a storm might be coming in. My poodles get very scared when there's storms. All right, so let's do puppy pose first. It's time to take the weights off because now I'm not working anymore. I'm doing flexibility. All right, you're gonna have to get locked outside. All right, outside you go. Let's go. You're being bad. To have to pause like that but you know real life kids pets all that stuff so let's just hang out in puppy pose for a few breaths we're gonna start on our hands and knees and then I want you to walk your hands forward thinking about bringing your armpits and your chest down towards the floor so maybe at first we're just gonna do the forehead that's cool 
kind of hanging out here. And then as you create a little bit more space, maybe the chin, keep breathing, so important. And then I'm gonna think about bringing my chest all the way down. Looking forward. If you still feel pretty good here, please don't turn your head like I did, but be careful. You can tuck your toes and straighten the legs. Here we go, one, two, three. Being sure to breathe in all of those kinds of positions so that you don't hurt yourself. If you hold your breath in those deep back bends, you actually just kind of hold in, lock in your discomfort. You will make things a lot more challenging. Another way I like to do my, uh, what is your age, Kelsey? 42, I'm 42. I just turned 42 uh, a week and a half ago. 42 with three teenagers to boot. Uh, which I'm proud of. Uh, after this, we're going to do uh, what I kind of call an alien backbend on the wall. It's hard for you to see because we're at the same angle, but basically I'm gonna do like a drop back backbend on the wall, and then I'm gonna think about sitting down. Actually, I thought I'd just move the camera. You're mobile. All right, so I'm going to move you over here, and then you can see. So, kind of starts with a drop back, you don't have to drop back far, so if there's something you're afraid of, no worries. We're gonna drop back so that we open up the shoulders and the chest, and then we're going to sit towards the wall. I'm not gonna make it to the wall, but the idea is that once I'm in this backbending shape, I'm gonna sit. And that's, I don't know why they call it an alien backbend, but it, whatever. All right, super nice for the shoulders. Doesn't look that great, but whatever. Try it out before you hate on it because it's a great backbend um, opener. So inhale. Lengthen, exhale, find the wall. Okay, that's not so bad. All right, so once we're on the wall, now I wanna start pushing the wall away, opening up the shoulders. I wanna see where my hands are. Make them even, all right? Open up the chest. Now here's that sit. Sit down. Keep the palms and the heel of the hand flat on the wall. Open up the armpits and sit as much as you can. And you can walk back a little bit. Let's inhale, stand back up. Exhale, release. Do that a couple of times. Holy mobility through the upper back through the chest and the shoulders. My only issue is like making sure, there's the kitty. Kitty, wanna come this way? Wanna come in? If she's nervous, she'll come. Uh, she did, she came. So cute, hi kitty. Poodles, you won't fit. Let's do that three times. Three of these alien back bends, as best you can. Not only is it gonna help you build a little confidence for when you do start to drop back, because you're only going so far, but it's also going to really strengthen the low back, open up the thoracic spine, open up the chest, open up the shoulders. So here we go again. Let's just stay here a few breaths. I'll guide you through where I'm at. Inhale, arms up. Lots of length. Tuck the tail underneath you. Look for the wall. <clears throat> Hands are even. I like to kind of lift my head back up and sit. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, drop the hips. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale, lift the chest. Push out of the hands. Exhale, sit lower. Inhale, straighten the legs. And come off the wall. Whew, it's quite a lot on the shoulders. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm not going to speak because I want to get in a little bit deeper and you try it on your own as well.
Here we go. Always, always doing those alien back bends before I really back bend. They're super helpful. All right. So now let's do some back bending. I mean, that was back bending, but let's do some back bending together. All right. First one I have written down is pigeon. So let's take the right leg into pigeon. So I like to kind of start in downward facing dog. It's a nice place to start. Take the right knee towards the right wrist, right ankle towards the left. Woo, hip opener. Like I said, I worked the glutes a lot yesterday. So feeling it. So first let's just settle into the, the pigeon and then we're gonna start working on making it a king pigeon. It helps females, females specifically, especially if you've had babies, and I have, it's been a few years, but I have, it helps to um, empty your bladder first. The idea is that we draw up through the pelvic floor and we draw in through the low belly, but you know, still empty your bladder first. So once you've had your pigeon on the right, let's close the knee joint as we prepare for king pigeon a little bit. So instead of having like this nice, awesome hip opener, let's close the knee joint a little bit, bring the foot a little closer to the body Knee joint starts to close. It's going to help you to balance some too. Now, I need you to come to the top of the kneecap. So you don't want the kneecap exactly where you're balancing, but the top of the kneecap. So you want to really stretch out the hip flexor, part of back bending. See how the chest is lifted, back bending. Now we're going to start working on catching the bind. And in the beginning, it's just going to be like this, which, you know, great, great bind, an amazing place to start. Maybe you can slowly start getting the foot in the nook of the elbow, making it kind of, I think they call this a mermaid bind. Um, but you turn to the side a little bit for it. A little more of a back bend if you keep the chest facing forward. Once this is not too hard for you, then we can start working on flipping our grip, as they call it. You can use a strap to do that if you're not quite ready to flip the grip on your own. It's a huge, let me emphasize, huge, shoulder opener. If you're ready for it, this is what I do when I come into flipping my grip in King Pigeon. So I flex the foot, that way I can kind of grab it easier, and I flip the palm up. My thumb goes away, and I'm able to put the, the top of the foot in the palm of my hand. So my thumb is on the pinky edge, and my other fingers wrap around the big toe edge. Now what I'm going to do is start to pull the foot in closer, and the elbow is going to lift up away from the body and lift up. So just try that at first. Get the foot into the palm of the hand, bring the elbow up. Now I settle in a little more forward and hang out here. Maybe you want to take the other arm up and grab the elbow for support, or maybe you can seek the foot. And then you can start working on bringing the head to the arch of the foot or whatever it is that your goal is. I'm not going to stay here too long because we have a second side and a couple more back bends to do, but breathe in. And when you do release the foot, please release it carefully. In the beginning, when I first started doing that, the foot would go fling. And I have since learned as a teacher, as a student, that when we bind, uh, we have to enter into those binds carefully and we need to exit them carefully as well. You can hurt yourself leaving postures just the same as you can entering them. So let's step back to downward facing dog, pedal out the legs, and do the second side. Ooh. Okay, a little pedaling. You're probably gonna notice the difference in how you feel from side to side. Cool. Let's do the second side. So first, let's just take pigeon. A little bit more of the hip opener version. Yeah, with the shin a little bit more forward. I'm not worrying too much about squaring my hips as I want to protect the knee. And I'm just trying to open up the hip right now. So honestly, mine's a little bit more like a deer, and then this would be a little bit more like a pigeon, but you know, whatever. Here, you out here for a few breaths, open the hip, strengthen the back, breathe. Even pigeon all in itself can be a little bit intense, so um, go slow, please move mindfully. Uh, we never want to force a shape for a picture uh, or for any reason in a class. 
Everybody else will move on with their day. They won't care. They won't think twice about your picture or your pose. And you will have the energy, and not energy, injury to deal with. It's just not worth it. All right, let's close the knee joint. Bring the left foot a little closer to the body. So the knee is pointing a little more forward. The knee the joint is closed. Now I can feel a little bit more balanced. And we can start working on getting that leg, that right leg, really stretched out back behind of us. And I'm on the quad and the front or the top of the kneecap. That really matters because as you start to look for this king pigeon pose, the knee has to lift up. And if you're right on the kneecap, it's going to be really uncomfortable to do. So you want to be on the top of the kneecap. So once you're here, let's bend that knee. Grab on with the right hand. So the left hand is giving me some balance. The right hand grabs the foot. Just stay here for a minute and stretch out the quad first. And then if you want to play with that mermaid shape, getting the foot a little bit more in the nook. Now I have to be more careful with this side because it is a big shoulder open opener and this was my injured shoulder. So I have to be very careful. But for you, you know, this may be your more open shoulder. A lot of people are better on their right side. So that's totally normal. You may see like, wow, I'm great on one side and not so great on the other. Welcome to being normal. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna flex the foot and I'm gonna try to put the foot into the palm of my hand. A little harder on this side. I don't have the same mobility. Cool. But it's in the palm of my hand. And now I'm going to start to lift the elbow. So I kind of pull everything in close. And as I lift the elbow, the chest starts to rotate forward. Okay, chest is rotated forward. I have the flipped grip. Breathe in here. Let's see how it looks. All right. And then maybe lift that other arm up. Grab the opposite elbow, give that arm a little bit of support. Or seek the foot. You can also do this with low lunges or um, Splits, front splits. And then you can also start to work your back bend, right? Like I said. So maybe you want to bring the foot to the head. If that's what you like. Okay. I'm releasing the leg. I'm <laughs> coming out of pigeon. We got a couple more back bends to do. Let's move on. All right. So the next pose that maybe you guys might like working on is camel. So from downward facing dog, I just kind of shift forward, come onto the knees. If you have a lot of knee pain when you're doing kneeling back bends, a nice trick is to just double up your mat, fold it in on itself. Then you don't have to have like an additional mat or kneelers or anything like that. You can just fold the mat in, uh, which I do if I'm working on Kapotasana or something much deeper. But if it's just camel, I think I'm okay. Make sure that the knees stay hip width and that the pelvis starts to kind of tuck under and move forward. Now my teacher likes to say like to bring your hands or your thumbs towards your sacrum, which is a nice way to give yourself support and remind yourself to give that lift as you come forward. Um, but I'm going to seek the heels. So my thumbs are going to come to the outer edges of the feet because I'm internally rotating through the shoulders, chest lifts, hips go forward, Grab the heels, thumbs on the outside, palms kind of on the heels. Ready? Inhale. And exhale. All right. Now while we're here, I want you to think about pushing the hips forward, lifting up through the pelvic floor, opening up through the chest. Legs are very powerful. Lift, and let's drop the head back. Stay for a few breaths. Now to come back up, you can kind of shift forward, back, forward, back. When your hips go forward, use your breath, inhale. And then maybe exhale back into your hero's pose. Helps to neutralize the low back. That way if you're having any pain, you can kind of round, counter pose. Tuck the pelvis underneath you. It always helps to fold. And even this is a bit of a fold after you've been back bending. So if that hurts at all, please take your time. You know, come all the way into a child's pose 
or a seated forward fold. Be careful, okay? Now, I don't know all the back bends that you guys want to work on. I'm going to do a different class for Kapotasana because it's, it's very, very advanced. It's probably the hardest back bend out there. Um, so I'm going to save that for a different class. But we're going to work a little bit on wheel as well today. So Urva Danyarasana, that upward facing bow. Uh, we could do Danyarasana too, which is the uh, regular bow. That might be fun as well. Uh, and then I'll show you some of the ways that I use back bends in my inversion practice as well. So let's start with just wheel. There's two different ways to enter into your wheel. Actually, there's, there's a few. Uh, let me show you a couple different versions that I do as I'm entering into my wheel pose. You can go from camel pose. So let me show you how I go from camel pose to a back bend, like wheel or Urva Dhanurasana. But with that one, you have to tuck the toes under, okay? Tuck the toes under. This one's, I would say, uh, intermediate uh, entry level. When I say entry level, I mean like the way to enter into that posture. So I'm going to look for bringing the hands all the way up and overhead, and then I'm going to lift all the way up in Urva Dhanurasana. So I'm not grabbing the heels like this. I'm reaching the arms up and over. Ready? So inhale. And we're going to exhale into our shape, and then we're going to inhale as we lift up. So inhale, exhale. Push, inhale. And you can go out of it the same way. Tuck the toes, send the knees forward. Now, if you want to have a really good quad workout, do that 10 times. Oh, you'll feel it. The next and probably the most basic way to enter into your real pose is to just do it from your back. So just lay on your back like you're in a bridge pose. And Get ready to press up. Remember that so much of coming into these back bends is about strong, active legs, super strong, active glutes. I'm gonna bring my arms up and overhead. My palms face out just a smidge. Not my palms, my fingers face out just a smidge. And as I lift up, I'm gonna draw the elbows in, push down through the feet, push the heels slightly forward of me, activate the glutes, and lift up. Lift up through the pelvic floor, draw the low belly in, open up the chest. All right, so do you see how my elbows aren't flaring like this? I try to bring them in towards each other. Feet are nice and firmly planted. If you have any knee pain, please, you know, feel free to come up out of the toes once you're in your back bend. Here we go, let's use the breath. Inhale, get onto your head, exhale, elbows draw in, push down through the feet, and inhale again. I like to walk the feet in a little bit closer. I know traditionally we should walk the hands. I like walking the feet. Think about opening up through the armpits, opening up through the shoulders, pushing down through the feet, activating the glutes, breathing here. Try not to rush it. Notice where the tension is. Now the other way that you can come into that wheel, exhale as you lower, is to drop back. Now that's pretty difficult too. We have a different class. I have a different class here on YouTube that I think will help you as you're coming into your drop backs. For me, I personally think it's the best way for me because I have to have the back active as soon as I'm coming into this. The legs are supportive, the, the back is active. For me, it's the safest way to enter a back bend because I know everything is turned on or I'm not even going to be able to drop back anyways. So, that's where you're working. I have feet a little wider than hips width. Again, I don't have this arch to my low back. Instead, the pelvis is kind of tucked underneath me and coming forward. The legs are super strong. I'm lifting up through the chest. Some people like to keep their hands at their forehead. I like to start to look for the floor as soon as I start to arch back. So. Make sure that you're breathing here. Inhale. And start to exhale. And stay a few breaths. Once you're in your space, try not to rush it. Think about what needs to engage, what needs to work, where you're feeling a little frustrated maybe. And to come back out, these little rocks forward and backward 
until you can inhale, send the hips forward, and come all the way up to standing. That takes quite a bit of practice, so please be patient with that. It's not gonna happen just like this. Another fun thing that you can do too when you're in your back bending is maybe start trying to lift one leg and then the other. Um, that's something that I know people have mentioned they wanna get a little bit better at. So when you're in your back bend, you start to lift one leg, all right? I wish I had a little bit more room. You know, I'll turn the other way. That way I don't kick anything because I have plants over here. All right, so let me show you how that works. Since we're all warmed up and we're back bending, I hope at this point too, you are working on your back bends, not just watching me doing back bends, but you're doing your back bends because you're all warmed up, right? All right. So once you're in your back bend, Get your feet underneath you so that you're feeling nice and strong. I like to be up on the balls of the toes when I lift the leg. So try to just shift the weight to the one leg. See how you feel just to have a knee bent. And then as you get stronger, you start to straighten that leg and lift high. Open the arms. It's going to come in a little closer. Very strong on that bottom leg. Let's switch. And coming back I can feel at this point my low back's feeling a little like, whoo, this is work. So when that happens, we fold. We fold. I can't even fold super fast. I have to kind of go into my folds carefully because I've been extending. No, I'm not. So move slowly as you switch that up. And you might even like a seated forward fold better. Just give yourself time to decompress the spine. Not that you're looking for compression, but sometimes that happens. So fold, fold, fold. If you feel, I should have said this at the beginning of the class. So even this is a nice way to neutralize after back bending. If you feel any, yes, pain, pinching, but also numbness or tingling, uh, zippy, zingy feelings, this could be that you're pinching a nerve, you're pinching something in your spine, or one of the nerves coming off the spine. So please immediately stop. I have had that happen, and it, it didn't alarm me because I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt. It just feels tingly. It just feels like my arm's going a little numb. Yeah, I was pinching a nerve. So I have since learned, like, don't play with that. Back away. Please listen to your body. Even things as small as a little numbness, a little tingling. Uh, I was feeling coming out of this like, oh, the little back's getting tight because it's working so hard. So now I have to let it relax and round. What you don't see when I post on Instagram is that after, you know, I do these deep backbending pictures, I go over to my camera, I'm looking at the pictures, but I'm sitting like this as I'm scrolling through the pictures, seeing which one I like, starring the ones that I like, but I'm decompressing the spine for minutes sometimes. This is a kitty that was outside. <laughs> That's boo. All right, so the other way that I do backbend, probably the most frequently, is when I'm in an inversion, because you guys know how I feel about forearm stand and handstand. So if that's one of the things that you're working on, obviously, you want to have a nice, solid handstand, forearm stand, headstand, any of those things. They have to be solid first before you can even think about starting to come into a backbend when you're there. Okay, so one of my favorite ways to do it is the scorpion. And you'll see why it says it's called that because you look like a scorpion tail. All right, I will show in um, forearm stand, and there could be a whole class. So if there's any interest in this, interest in this, please message, mention it. Oh my gosh, I must be getting tired in the comment section because I would do a whole class on scorpion um, in your inversions if there's enough interest. So I'm gonna do this in forearm stand because for me that's where I am like tried and true. I'm super steady. I'm gonna come into my forearm stand and then I will talk you through as what I'm doing to be able to bring myself into a deep back bend in my forearm stand. Let me get nice and centered so you can see well. All right. First things first, get into your nice solid forearm stand. Then what happens, you bend the knees, toes come overhead. This is kinda of nice because it's a nice way to start to balance. 
But then what has to happen is we got to get active. And that's going to look like, see how I'm bringing the chest through and I'm stretching the chin up. As I do that, I start to activate the legs, bring the toes down. Breathe. It's pretty intense at this point, so you have to move carefully and listen to your body. Try to lift back up straight when you're done. Neutralize the spine and then come up. Nice place to child's pose, hero's pose, relax the back. It's a lot of work for the back to, to flex that much. So please listen to your body. If it ever feels too much, you feel too dizzy, lightheaded, you can't think straight. Uh, it's hard to breathe in back bends, but you should be able to breathe. And if you feel like you can't, it's definitely something that says to you, I need to back away. So I hope that you used that time when I was back bending to work on some of the back bends that you like. I know we didn't hit a whole lot of them. Just depends on what people like, right? Uh, but now that you're very warmed up, Feel free to do whatever back bends you like. But first, I'm gonna end the class with doing 100 bicycle crunches. Because anytime that we work the back, we have to counter pose, right? So we do those forward folds, we stretch out the low back, we relax, um, we relax through those areas that we're working so hard. But now we're going to strengthen the opposite side. So a lot of people get pain in their low back after back bending. Makes sense, I get it. And that's because maybe their abs are very weak and we're not able to help balance that strong, intense move out. So I always end my back bending classes with doing some kind of ab work. You know, maybe we'll mix it up. Let's mix it up and do four different exercises, uh, 25 each. So first we'll do, first we'll do those 25 bicycle crunches and we'll mix it up as we go. Hands behind the head and here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Oh my gosh, my plant just fell. All right, legs straight up for like the Brita Karani, and we're just gonna reach for the feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Keep this shape and we're going to just do hip up. So we're just gonna lift the hips up, really work the low belly 25 times, flex the feet back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Let's see. Let's just do L leg switches, all right? We'll do 50, because it's like 25 and we can do that for the bicycle crunches, so we wanna try to even it out. We'll just come across, tap opposite side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 strong legs, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 49 and 50. Whew. Good. Gosh darn, I think a cat did that to my plants. Let's see how crazy 
All the back bending made my hair. <laughs> sort of crazy. That's all right. All right. That's it for today, guys. That is it. I hope that that helped you to feel strong in your backbending practice and that doing the abs at the very end will have you feeling like your back is stronger than ever and you're not having any low back pain. You guys did a great job. If you have any questions, comments, please make sure that you let me know down in the comment section and uh, find me over on Instagram, TikTok, all that fun stuff. Have an amazing day. Take care. Drink your water. Namaste.